Hi there and welcome to a special webinar, this time looking at essay technique for A-level economics. Uh, in this series of videos we're going to take a, a look at three or four different exam questions, all 25 marks, and in particular focus on uh, making a point, explaining it briefly, building contextualised analysis first, and then evaluating but including the point you're making as part of the evaluation, a really quite important technique. This question is for those of you revising market structures, competition, uh, in particular, uh, the impact of uh, new firms in the market and whether or not that helps consumer welfare. Here's the question. Neoclassical theory of competition implies that more firms in the market is the only way to improve outcomes for consumers. With reference to examples, to what extent do you agree? 25 mark question. Every question in the exam has certain key topic hooks. They may not necessarily be mentioned directly in the question, but this one's clearly about contestable markets, it's about economic welfare and efficiency, it's about uh, different forms of market competition and the significance, for example, of entry barriers in the market. Lots of opportunity for diagrams, uh, and we'll look at a couple of them with this answer. Uh, crucially, the chance to show your contextual awareness, it does say with reference to examples, so are you aware of industries where things are changing rapidly, for example, in industries affected by technological change, uh, the emergence of challenger firms in industries such as airline and banking, telecoms, what have you. Have a look at the question in particular. There's always at least one or two hooks to help your evaluation. So, is the only way is clearly a phrase you'll have to refer to in your answer. And to what extent to agree, again, is inviting an evaluative response. We like to see students build what's called our pecan pie approach. So however many points you're going to be making in this question, I'll deliver three for you. Make your point, explain it briefly, but at the start of the paragraph, make it really clear what your argument is. So point explained, then build contextualized analysis, contextualized analysis. Instead of just going purely theoretically through the answer, try to put it in context. So pecan. Point explained, contextualised analysis. And after you've done that for each point, build some evaluation. So evaluate as you go, but including the point you're making in your evaluation. So make sure your evaluation is relevant or pertinent to the point that you've been making. Let me take you through three examples here. Here's my first point. For more firms to enter a market, barriers to entry must be low enough to make it profitable. We see this in monopolistic competition, where many firms sell differentiated products, but where entry barriers are not significant. So I'm starting off by looking at the impact of new firms in a market such as perfect competition, then build the contextualised analysis. Here's a nice little phrase to use. Consider, for example, a monopolistically competitive industry such as sandwich bars and cafes in the local town. So straight away, we're providing some context. Okay? Then build the analysis. If this market is fragmented with a low concentration ratio, then the daily battle for market share between competing suppliers is likely to keep prices low and maintain the quality of output. In this situation, both price and non-price competition will lead to better outcomes for consumers, linking back to the question. Prices will be low, perhaps close to marginal cost, bringing in condition for efficiency and non-price factors such as the quality of service, the range of products, etc., maybe the free Wi-Fi in cafes, will also enhance welfare for most consumers. The entry of new firms puts extra pressure on businesses to avoid being X inefficient. This improves productive efficiency. So quite a chunky paragraph of analysis there, uh, building, building the argument that uh, new firms coming in will be helpful to consumers. However, and this is where we have to start building the point included in the evaluation. So, however, in this market, monopolistic competition, long run profits get competed away, perhaps leaving businesses with less money to fund research and increased investment in, in raising capacity. And then you build the evaluation, consumers may therefore lose out in the long run from a slower pace of innovation and perhaps poorer services. So, here's our pecan pie point. Make the points, build the analysis, put it in context, give a good example, but then evaluate the point that you've made. Let's move on to a second point. 
Before we do that, here's a good analysis diagram you could be using. So here's the monopolistic competition diagram in the long term, where the entry of new firms, new products, uh, competes the profits away. And at the equilibrium output Q2, only normal profits are made. A second point, another way in which the entry of new firms might improve outcomes for consumers is that it reduces the risk of price collusion. By the way, notice here, as a sort of introduction to the paragraph, we're saying another way in which the entry of new firms might improve outcomes. We're going back to the question. We're anchoring our answer to the question. And my point here is that the entry of new firms cuts the risk of collusion in markets. A little bit of explanation. Collusion could be through price-fixing agreements or decisions by suppliers to share the market rather than compete. So I've made my point, briefly explained it. Then I build my contextualised analysis. Consider the oligopolistic market for transatlantic airlines. She's been dominated by large-scale businesses, including BA and Virgin. In an oligopoly, there's often an incentive for tacit price-fixing when setting fares. But if new firms with different pricing models and objectives enter the market, a cartel can be undermined. Nice use of a bit of oligopoly theory. This can be modelled using game theory, specifically the prisoner's dilemma. So there's a nice bit of theory there, some good analysis there. And then the context. A good example has been the rapid growth of Norwegian Airlines. It will offer a low cost, no frills, and much cheaper flight from the UK to the United States. Their entry has made the airline market more contestable, offering more choice to consumers at lower prices. Overall, this is a welfare gain. See what's happening here? Building the analysis, putting it into context, and linking again back to the fact that consumers may gain. However, here's the point in evaluation. So we're talking about Norwegian Airlines, which is a new entrant. The new entrants may not be able to maintain profitability in the long run, perhaps because existing businesses cut their prices and sacrifice profits in the short run to undercut entrants and cause them to make a loss. This tactic is known as limit pricing. So a nice evaluative phrase, challenging and questioning whether the new entrants will survive in the market for any length of time. Uh, a third point, counter-argument, is that the threat of entry is, more, is a more powerful influence than the number of firms. So the question is about whether more firms coming into the market is important. Well, this point I'm making is actually it's not, the, it's not the number of firms in the market, that's actually the threat of entry. This links us back to the theory of contestable markets. So in a contestable market, the number of firms and the size distribution, in other words, how big they are, is not important in determining the conduct of businesses. Instead, when we study contestable markets, more focus is given to the credible threat of entry from a potential rival. And then to build the analysis in a contestable market, we assume there are zero or low sunk costs, find the term. Even if an existing firm has market power, the threat of so-called hit and run entry from a new rival might be enough for the established business to price below the monopoly profit maximizing equilibrium. Just building the analysis a bit further, the more contestable the market is, the more likely an allocatively efficient outcome is achieved. Presumably from a consumer welfare point of view, that's good news. And again, just to contextualize it, we've seen increasing contestability in low-cost airlines, broadband providers, the fast food sector, and also in sectors such as Taxi services and, and hotels, Uber and Airbnb mentioned that. So a little bit of context to the analysis, but then we have to evaluate. And the point included evaluation is that, however, although most markets are contestable, often there is strong consumer loyalty to existing brands. That makes life harder for new entrants. And established firms may have integrated vertically to control the supply chain, vertical integration. As a result, prices for consumers may remain high and consumer welfare will be damaged. So again, we're evaluating the argument, calibrating and questioning the degree of contestability. This would be an ideal moment uh, before you evaluate to throw in an analysis diagram. Uh, the profit maximizing output is Q1, price P1. The normal profit equilibrium is output Q2, price P2. Satisficing would be any price between P1 and P2. The more contestable the market, the closer we're going to get towards P2 rather than P1. Keep in mind, of course, contestability, entry of new firms. We're really looking for cost and revenue diagrams 
rather than simple supply and demand. Okay? And then we're trying to build an evaluative conclusion to the essay. We want to finish the essay off on a strong point. We've made three key points. We've contextualised it. We've an analysed it. We've evaluated three points. We're then looking to finish off with a couple of you know, strong thoughts. Now, maybe the, it depends on the example. It depends how much you have to, to write. <clears throat> but in, in the example I teach, we're looking for a really strong, final, reasoned thought. <clears throat> there are good reasons for arguing that more intense competition does enhance consumer welfare. Competition helps to keep prices lower. The battle for market share is an incentive for firms to, productively, to, be, to be productively efficient and improve their products, for example, by spending more on research and development. But the number of firms is not the only way to improve consumer welfare. And again, I give a couple of examples. Tough enforcement of competition policy, targeting price fixing collusion, and important to recognise that having businesses in markets and exploit economies of scale can help consumers in the long run. And I bring in the idea of natural monopoly, that where maybe only one firm might be able to achieve a minimum efficient scale, in which case, allow that firm to be a natural monopoly in certain parts of the industry, allow it to achieve economies of scale to help consumers, but perhaps set quality of service targets from a regulator so that the, the, the firm works more in the interest of consumers. But it builds some sort of final conclusion based on the arguments you have already developed earlier on in the essay. So there we go. Here's just, these are just my thoughts on how to answer this 25 marker. A 40 minute, 45 minute essay is never easy and you will certainly need to practice a lot before the exam. Planning it and writing it, I, I recommend you write somewhere between six and ten times essays before the final exam. So you get a really good feel for what you can write in 45 minutes. Check out our YouTube channel for lots more examples of essays as we go through them.